Atlanta Falcons. New England Patriots. From NRG Stadium, the site of Super Bowl 51 in Houston, Texas. Interviews with players, coaches, and sports celebrities. Now your hosts, former NFL tight end Mike Barber and pastor of Elevate Church, Brandon Barber. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NRG Stadium located in Houston, Texas, the home of the 51st Super Bowl. Son, it is Super Bowl time, and we got some Come great on, we're testimonies. Fired up or what? Are hey, you pumped? We're in a hometown, baby, H Town. I'm loving it, Dad. <laughs> it's been a blast. One of my favorite years so Ever. far. We got some studs. I mean, we're talking about Patrick, fullback for the Bad Falcons. Fullback. What he does in the community. Hits the him linebacker Jesus, hard. He's good, man. Oh, makes you feel good, right? Yeah. Deron, safety for the Patriots. This guy is incredible. Talks about his marriage, his family. I mean, we are loaded up. Jake with some Matthews. Great talk to him. Oh, what another great left guy. Tie. Michael, sixth yeah. overall pick just a couple years ago. Great family Followed legacy. after his dad who played 19 years. He's not bad to the bone. He's bad through the bone. You he understand is, what man. I'm talking about? <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you, yep. it is Super Bowl time. Super Bowl Sunday's just around the corner. And we got a special program just for you. There's a rumor that you love the Lord. Tell us about it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's been a big part of my life. I remember uh, last year, one of the big things I struggled with was tithing. And over and over again, he's kind of like, forgot my wallet and stuff like that. And then finally, he's, you know what? I'm just going to take my entire year's salary and donate it. And a couple days later, I got my salary quadrupled, brand new contract, like way more money for no reason. I just kept thinking like the Malachi 310 and talking about, I'll open the floodgates of heaven for you. And like, that was, that was a huge part in my, my life last year. How did you come to know Jesus? My, my, my dad was a pastor growing up, so I was lucky enough to be born into a family that loved Christ. God is love, and no matter what you're going through, he'll be there for you, and it doesn't matter what you've done in your past, he'll accept you for how you are, and he just wants to love on you. You know, honestly, I think, uh, as I think about the last nine years of my life and, and what God has brought me through and brought me to here in Houston, I'm just so humbled, and it's a reminder to me um, and I believe this, there's no such thing as a self-made man. Um, I think about the opportunities that I've had, the people I've had poured in my life. It's nothing but God. Uh, it, there's no other way to explain it in my mind. So I'm just so humbled for, for everything that he's been doing in my life. And I think living for something bigger than myself uh, through this whole journey of football is, is something that I, I truly believe in and I truly hold on to day in and day out. And the Lord has really... He just blessed us. I mean, we're sitting here in Houston. We're having this great experience, but it could be anybody. But he chose us, and, I, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for the way he continues to work on this football team, the relationships that we have, the men that we have. It's just truly unbelievable. I want to ask you a couple questions. What led you to your walk with Christ, and then, and then why Jesus? Well, honestly, I've always been a believer. Um, you know, just recently, a couple years ago, got baptized. Um, but just the people that's been in my corner, you know, if it's from, you know, the the, the pastors and, and guys that, that goes along with the team throughout the year, uh, just people in my corner, man, just I know without them and without the help of God, man, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. What would you say to everybody watching? If people are on the on the fence, say, man, watch out, I follow this man named Jesus. What would you say to them? Uh, get behind him, man. I mean, he, he blesses us every day, you know, just allowing us to wake up. Um, why not believe in it? You know, um, like I said, I'm a firm believer. You know, um, I can sit here and talk all day about, you know, my walk and the things I have to, had to deal with throughout my life. But, you know, I'm a firm believer that with him, man, I'm the, this the, he the reason why I'm here today. Thank you for taking a few minutes to tell us about what Jesus Christ means to you and how that took place. Uh, for me, you know, I've, my parents instilled it to us as a kid, you know, and then uh, as a father now, that's something I rely on. You know, why, why do I need Jesus in my life? You know, that's a question my wife and I kind of ask ourselves. And especially having kid, uh, a daughter now and another daughter coming in April, you know that we need we need them yeah we need we need it in our life and uh how we raise them and and just our daily everything how are you able to manage your walk with god in the middle of a football season that is very demanding 
Uh, it is very demanding, but you know, having having Jesus as you know an outlet to lean on when things are tough, and can continuing to praise Him and thank Him when things are good, because you know none of this is possible w without Him. So, just kind of you know always keeping Him in mind and and uh, knowing knowing why we're here. Now I played tight end in the league for 10 years myself. You're a linebacker. Yes, sir. Okay, now you're a brother in the Lord. Yes, sir. You love the Lord with all your heart, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and I love the Lord. So now if I hooked up over the middle and the ball was coming to me, mm. you'd be nice to me, wouldn't you? I would run through you as hard as I could <laughs> and then shake your hand after the game. <laughs> what would you say the importance of what faith has been in your life and where it's got you to where you are today? Um, I would say, uh, you know, with, with God as my foundation, I've been able to, uh, you know, rely on him uh, through the tough times. Um, you know, this is a tough sport, um, and, you know, it's uh, definitely uh, at this level, it's an environment that you can't do it by yourself. So being able to rely on him has been uh, a game changer for me. So I always kind of grew up in church, um, but it was just kind of like, you know, going with mom and dad. Um, I didn't really uh, get serious until college. Um, you know, it's kind of going through, you know, some rough times in college. and. Uh, once, uh, you know, I'd hit that moment, uh, you know, it's kind of one of my lowest moments. Um, and I just said, I, I can't do it by myself anymore. And uh, I gave it all to him and uh, <laughs> everything's worked out ever since then. So I'm stoked to be here and I'm excited to be here. Um, but, you know, it, it's all part of God and he's just, you know, the author of the story. And so I'm going to try and, you know, live my life and live it for him as best I can. Big man, huge <laughs> smile. And that smile, I believe, comes from just really having a relationship with the Lord. Am I right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, uh, relationship with God is, you know, he can give you a peace and a joy that, that sometimes, you know, people can't really understand. I grew up, you know, in the church. You know, my dad's a pastor. My mom was actually just ordained this past weekend uh, as well. So, um, I, mean, I mean, I grew up, you know, in the church and uh, reading the word. But, uh, you know, I think my parents did a good job of, you know, letting us, you know, kind of find our own way. And, and develop our own relationship uh, with God, and I think that was that was kind of huge with with me and my and my siblings, kind of you know finding our own relationship and not kind of being forced. Uh, and you know I think that's that's been great for for each and every one of us. And then uh, like you said, to be on this stage and you know to represent God and just the blessings that that He's allowed me to receive, and uh, you know just just the blessings that He's been in my life uh, has has been awesome. Like you said, I think that's something I grew up. Uh, you know, dreaming about, you know, reading, going to FCA camps and, and seeing guys use their platform to, to reach others has, has definitely been a dream of mine and, and to be here now has, has been amazing. The biggest thing I can say is, is to trust in God and trust in his plan. You know, his word says, you know, everything's going to work out for his good for those who love him. And I mean, as long as you hold on to that, you know, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You know, the fact that you already know that he's worked it out, you know, that can give you a peace that, that is just indescribable. Welcome. Thank you for and congratulations for a great year. Uh, tell me about your faith walk. Uh, you give God a lot of glory, or if not all the glory, for where you are today. Um, it was it was crazy because I really didn't go to church when I was little and growing up, and um, not up until I got to high school when I met my my defensive line coach in high school and uh, his wife and and their son and daughter. So um, you know the, the whole family and. Uh, you know, they, they were a real big Christian family, and uh, I used to go stay with them a couple of times. And you know, I was just like, you know, I want, I want to go to church with y'all. I just felt like I want to go to church, so I would go to church with them on Sundays, you know. And then I started going to Bible studies. And then like one time we were like um, at a Bible study, me and um, Tyler, and um, I just felt like I was like. I wanted to get baptized. Like, I just felt like I wanted to get, like, yeah, I felt good. Like, I wanted to get baptized, so I did. And um, it was a great experience. And, um, you know, just to have Coach Agnew do it, somebody that, that helped raise me and um, get me to where I am today, it was a real big thing, too. Is it easy to have your walk with God, your faith in God, here in the middle of the football season? Um, you know, it, it really is, because I give a lot of things to him. You know, I, I get under bread about a lot of things. And, um, you know, I just keep on working, and um, you know, he gives me he gives me breath every day, and gives me a chance to go do what I do every day. Listen up, guys. We got a great interview coming up right now with Martin for the Atlanta Falcons. He talks about how awesome we all know the power of a praying mama. 
you're going to see this, man. It's funny. It's great. You're going to see the love of Jesus all over this guy. How does it feel, man, to be here? It's amazing, man. It's a surreal opportunity, you know, just taking everything in day by day. What, what led you to the moment to where you met Jesus? And then, man, what keeps you in love with Jesus? I think you just got to stay consistent in your faith. Like anything in life, you got to be persistent, you know. Um, don't just call on him when you need him. Thank him when he does good for you also, you know. So um, I, I met Jesus. I mean, I met him when I was young. I went to church every Sunday with my mom. How important is it to surround yourself with the right people? Very important because you are who you're around sometimes, you know. Like if you're around people not doing nothing, then you're not going to do anything either. You know, if you're around your friends, they're going to push you to do better. You're going to do better. Do you have some key people in your life that keep you accountable with your walk with Christ? Absolutely. Uh, my mom. Brag on them. <laughs> Talk about mama. My mom, she'll call me before she even says hello. She's in prayer. <laughs> Come on. I love praying mamas. Tell me about it. How, how has she impacted your life when it comes to your love for God? Oh, uh, man, she just always tells me, like, you know, he's, he's not going to leave you hanging. He never, he's not going to leave you hanging. He's never done that. So just make sure you you do what you have to do, and he's going to take care of you. You probably got away with nothing because the Holy Spirit was telling her, right? Like, she already knew before you even got home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I grew up in the church. Um, you know, really uh, had some some folks uh, during my early part of my career in Indianapolis who really made a big impact on me. I'll give a shout out to our team chaplain there, Eric Simpson, uh, was a great mentor to me and someone who uh, helped guide me further in my walk. And, um, you know, I've just felt the, you know, the, I can't, there's no other explanation for me being able to do the things I've done and be a part of the things I've been a part of other than God, man. Uh, just God has been so, um, so gracious to me and blessed me in so many ways. So, uh, you know, I, I believe, um, I believe in the message of the gospel. I believe in what Christ came here and did for us. And look, there's a lot of answers and a lot of reasons, you know, um, I would say, well, because I believe that it's truth that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins and for our salvation. You know, um, I believe in, I believe that the story is true, that, that God sent his only son. And, and when you feel that in your heart and, and, you, and you know that as truth, it changes your life. And so that would be, you know, my message. Don't be afraid to have your life changed by that, by that truth and by that news. So I grew up in a uh, Lutheran church down in Altamont Springs, Florida. And uh, really, when I was younger, I cared about sports. I just wanted to play sports. I, you know, I was missing AAU baseball on Sundays when we were at church, so it wasn't you know, that wasn't a high topic for me. And when I went to college and kind of explored on my own, um, we had an awesome FCA director there, uh, Jack Easterby and um, Adrian Dupre, who really kind of made me search deeper for the Lord. And kind of, and that's where I found that intimate relationship with the Lord and um, kind of changed my life. Philippians 4.13 has always been the one that's hit home. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because whether you're in tough times or in good times, you always got to rely on the Lord. What's faith, family, and football mean to you? Everything. Everything. Um, you know, for starting out with, with faith, I mean, without you know, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, none of us would have this opportunity to be here. You know, and family, it's not just our immediate family, it's, it, it's everybody. I mean, I consider this team, you know, part of my family, you know, so it's playing for them, representing them, you know, and taking care of them the way we would, you know, treat anybody else. And then, you know, then football. You know, football is, is a great sport. It's what's brought us, you know, here to this stage right now. And it's an opportunity, you know, and a platform that we can showcase our love for God. I've had coaches throughout my career tell us to use our influence in a positive way. And so I think that is definitely a positive way in sharing the love of Jesus Christ, you know, just through everything that we do, not just here tonight, you know, but, you know, what we do, you know, elsewhere as well. And so it's been really fun. First of all, man, congratulations for being here, bro. You feeling good about this? Yeah, I'm excited. Oh. Yeah, I told you, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It'll be pretty good, man. Hey, just tell me a little bit about how, what's the importance of your faith in God uh, and what success was it bringing you here to where you are today? Um, I mean, I kind of grew up in the church a little bit. My uncle was a pastor. Uh, he passed away, that's what I said it was. But my auntie like kind of took over the church. And uh, I mean, my grandma lives by faith. So it's always been, yeah, I mean, in me. I can't say that I live every day righteous. But I mean, it's, it's deep inside me and I always live every day by faith. Yeah, it's important to be committed, but you don't have to be perfect, right? Yeah. And so is there that key person in your life that really kind of helped keep you grounded in your love for God? Um, I mean, Grandma always... Praying Grandmama, huh? You know, Grandma's going to preach that word. Yeah. She probably knew everything before you did, huh? Yeah, she knew when yeah. you messed up and you weren't even there, right? Yeah, already, yeah, man. She, she, 
I got a scripture I could do all day through Christ, and uh, I mean, that's the reason I can say I'm here, man. She always believed in that and I always preached that. And uh, I mean, I call grandma right now, you know, uh, ask her how she's doing, you know what I mean? She's going she's gonna to say, blessed, maybe the, you, blessed yeah. and highly favored. You know that's coming, you know what I mean? Too blessed to be stressed or exactly. something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Grandma's always got something for you, so. Maybe you need to give her a call before Sunday, huh? I uh, should be here. First time flying, so yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing her when she get in Thursday. This next roll-in is very special. A young man by the name of Jake Matthews. He played college ball at Texas A&M, an All-American there. He plays tackle for the Atlanta Falcons. What's so special about him is his father, Bruce Matthews, played for probably 15, 16 plus years in the league, 10 plus years, all pro, but a family that is so in love with God and so not ashamed to be a voice for God. First and foremost, I, I've been blessed to be a part of a great family that instilled you know, great values in me. And um, you know, being a follower and having you know, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that, that's one of the things that really I feel compels me to do what I do. Um, you know, there's, there's trials, there's troubles in this sport, in this world, but um, having that to fall back on, uh, that, that's what really gets me going. And, uh, you know, the Lord's blessed me so much to have a great family that instilled that in me and are always supporting me. So, you know, as much as I would, you know, like to take credit for, you know, earning this or working my way up to this, I, I didn't earn any of this. I, I've been extremely blessed and our whole family has been. So uh, we, we take a lot of pride in that. And, um, you know, I think that's where we, we, we get the mindset and the attitude we have and what we do and how we work and how we try to do things the right way. I think a really special moment, uh, I think it was about fourth grade, is I'm sitting with my dad. We own a little property out here in Houston and, uh, you know, having a really close and, you know, really close father-son moment where, um, you know, I basically put my faith in the Lord and I was with him for that. And I, I still remember that to this day. And it, 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 it's, you know, growing up in this family, you know, everyone said, oh, we, you, you were probably forced to play football. Everyone expected so much. I've had nothing but loving family that have um, just nurtured me and supported me and helped me grow in Christ. And, you know, something that I've kind of lived by, you know, Christ calls us to, in everything we do, we do it with all our heart and as if we're doing it for him and not for man. And, um, you know, I take a lot of pride in that because, uh, you know, the, the support you get from this world, yeah, it, it's nice when it's here, but it, it's fleeting. And, um, you know, having Christ to fall back on is something that is everlasting and, you know, you can take to the bank. Well, the awesome thing is we have a group of core believers that really honestly play for something much higher than winning football games or, or winning championships. Um, there's a higher purpose on our team that drives each other to, to uh, invest in relationships, that drives each other to care about each other. I came uh, to Christ about uh, four years ago. I was fully baptized, but it's been a long process. Um, I was much like... Um, much like Saul when he was trying to crucify Christians, I had my uh, petty arguments that I tried to find all the, the weakest links and try to break them down. Right behind me, we just got done interviewing Deron Harmon from the New England Patriots, man. I'm telling you, this guy's walk with God is crazy. Well, the great thing is that I grew up in a church. My mother, she's a reverend, uh, choir right. director. So the good thing, I got to play the organ. I play the organ in church when I go home. So whenever I get home, I get to go up there, lead praise and worship, playing the organ. And I say it's just, it's been a journey. I mean, I grew up in the church, but um, I still deal with everything that everybody else deals with, the sin, the temptation of this world. And I would say it's just been prayers, uh, my church family just constantly praying for me and just giving God the, the sense to just push me in the right direction and to be able to be the man that I am. And I'm, like I said, I'm still a sinner. We're all sinners. But I say God has pushed me in a great direction. It's continuing to increase his faith in me. And then I'm just excited. I got two boys, a wife, and just leading them. You know what I'm saying? I know God is always going to be the, 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 the source 
the source of me to lead my family. What would you say some core values are that you want to instill in your marriage and your family? Oh, I mean, the first thing is just loving God first and foremost. Yeah. You know, the idea of having a, a strong family is you got to have a source, like I always say, just something that everybody can fall back on. And uh, just loving Him will be the first thing, uh, loving each other. And just treating people how you want to be treated. I think uh, when you do that, everything else usually uh, falls in line. Come on, man. A lot of people are watching here. Answer this one question, man. Why Jesus? Because at the end of the day, we're all going to face adversity. We're all going to fall short. We're going to mess up. Um, and you just can't do life on your own. It's just you're always going to fall short. Um, nothing is satisfying enough to just make everything better except God. I mean, he makes everything easier. He lets you to be able to, when you fall, he picks you up. You know what I'm saying? You know that you're not always by yourself. And then in this world that's just so crazy, knowing that you always have something to rely on and go back to just makes everything a lot easier to deal with. Hey guys, we're about to hear from my, my friend, Jacob Tammy, tied in for the Atlanta Falcons. We first met a few years ago when it was his first time in the Super Bowl with the Colts. And he loved Jesus then. And can I tell you, man, he is on fire even more for Jesus today. You know, I feel really blessed to be here again, first of all, uh, to have a chance uh, to be a part of another team like this. And for me, I know that, uh, you know, God has been in control of, of my life and certainly my career, you know, is uh, a big part of that. And uh, I feel very blessed that, uh, you know, God has given me the opportunities I've had in this league so far. And, um, you know, I would just say, for me, I've been around a lot of great influences. Um, when I, you know, as a young player, being in Indianapolis with uh, Tony Dungy as my head coach, with a great locker room of uh, Christian guys there, really uh, made a great impact on me. I mean, even for me, going all the way back to my parents, you know, uh, my upbringing. You know, I just I tell people a lot. I, I'm so thankful for that and for the way that they raised me and um, the. Just, I just feel like I've had so many great opportunities, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for. So, and I, and I know that even through injury right now, that God's in control, and that uh, there's a, there's a plan for that and a purpose for that, and uh, that's that's what I I have my trust in, and uh, I have my trust in Him, and, and that there's a, a great purpose and a great plan for this. What are some things that kind of help you get through this season of really kind of questioning God's whole role in this? Oh man, well, look, I know this for a fact that a lot of times God gives us speed bumps. For, for reasons, right? To slow us down. Uh, you know, I'm so far from perfect, you know, as I'm sure you would attest all, I mean, like, I'm not just, it's all, the glory goes to God, man, not me. I mean, I'm just like everybody else, dude. I mean, I'm, I need, I need to be in the word, you know, I need to be praying. I need to be in communication with the father and, and in order for me to uh, be living my best life, you know, and so uh, I know that that this is a speed bump that came for a reason, you know um, so uh, I just uh, scripture wise, you know something that I've been looking at lately um, Ephesians 2 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith For by grace you have been saved through faith for this is not your own doing it is the gift of God and that I mean That just takes me back to the foundation, you know, it's 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 not, at the end of the day, it's not about my doing. Uh, my actions are a result of where my spirit is. You know, it's, it's, it's God working through me when I do things that are good. What I would say to anyone is uh, just seek him. And, you know, he tells us seek and you will find. And, and I think that uh, there's something uh, supernatural that, that happens in your heart when Christ comes in. And, and if you seek him with a true heart, he will. Uh, so I would say seek him and see what happens because um, the gift that uh, Jesus Christ offered is, is a life-changing gift. And uh, it's, it's an, the, the message of the gospel is something that I believe wholeheartedly. And uh, it, when, it, when it's in your heart, it's, uh, it's life-changing. Congratulations. I believe this is your eighth year at, uh, at Atlanta. this level with Atlanta. Yes, this is my eighth year with Atlanta. I've uh, been in the league for 13 years now, four with the Houston Texans and one with Detroit, and, and then eight here. I've been very blessed and, and lucky to be where I've been. Yeah. Tell us about your faith walk. You know, this game is important, and it's a mm -hmm. lot of fun, and the atmosphere is just off the chart. But underneath it all, there's something much deeper and much more important. Absolutely, and, and you know, in this sport, you feel the highest highs and the lowest lows and to have a foundation where you can always 
fall back to or, or have with you all the time and uh, take that with you, you always feel somewhat secure because you don't have to, to worry about those highest highs or lowest lows. You always have Jesus Christ with you. Yeah. How do you apply that in, you, you know, you're very busy. Your, your wife can sacrifice. Mm -hmm. you, you have how many children? I have four children. Four children, yeah. young, I, I suppose. Twelve, ten, eight, and six. Actually, my 12 just turned 13 last week, so Sage, she, she's uh, she's she's let, the big let one. Let me pause right now and I'll pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you balance all of that? Well, you know, um, I have an unbelievable wife. She does, she makes sure everything's am on par and, and go in the right direction. Um, every day I start my day with readings and uh, scripture. Um, I always talk to my children about that, um, making sure they're still engaged because there's six months there that I'm not as engaged as I could be. Yeah. You know, and that's really hard. And, and having a great wife that does that as well, um, it gives me comfort and, and helps me raise my children the right direction. That's awesome. How did this Christ become Christ inside of you. You know, when I, did that happen? Well, you know, the, the the thing I was very blessed to have grandparents that came over from the old country. It was very important to them. So I saw a great example of that. Then my parents, that was a great example for me. And, and as I got older and I understood the importance and understood what was going on um, in my life and in my faith, um, somewhere in college there. There was a time where I just, this is just, you know, I got to be more proactive instead of reactive and, and, and lead a better life. No matter what you've done, no matter how you've affected someone else in life, God will forgive you. He will give you that second chance. And that's why he came to this earth to uh, relieve us of our sins and give us that hope that we will be in heaven with him. Son, this program could not be complete without taking a little bit of a time out. A little out, bit of football. Talking about football. And who can talk it, who can break it down better than the professor. And you'll understand why we call him the professor. Professor, I promise you, my highlight every year. As this, is mine. Ah, uh, you're so kind. But nobody can break down the game like you can. So I'm all ears. Okay, so here's what you go back. You do one of two things. You gotta look back to the first Patriot Super Bowl and see if they reenact that plan. Now here's what the twist in that plan was. They were playing the greatest show on turf. You know, the Falcons are pretty much the new greatest show on turf with the numbers that they put up. So here's the debate. Do you now go ahead and take the receivers away or do you take the running backs away? So back in 2001, what they did, the game plan was, believe it or not, take out Marshall Falk. He was the main guy, because Bill Belichick takes out one guy. And what they did is that on every play, whether he got the ball or didn't get the ball, somebody hit him, and somebody <laughs> hit him hard. And so to hold him back, and again, remember, this is a Ram team that had 2,000-yard receivers close to being Hall of Fame caliber. And you look over, so the debate now is going to be, do you go ahead and start to take out the running backs, which are very good, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman, and then concentrate with your coverage guys and try to minimize them. But I think you're going to see a little bit of that 2001 game plan. Wow. Only you would remember <laughs> that, so help me. As did Marshall. He got a lot of hits in that game. But compare the two quarterbacks for us. Well, you've got a, an elite quarterback uh, in Matt Ryan since 2008. He came into the league, took the team to the playoffs, had a nice five-year run. And you're talking about the greatest quarterback in the history of the league and Tom Brady. I agree. So, I mean, it's like I, I didn't make that transition until the last Super Bowl win when they beat Seattle, but that's when I made it. You win four Super Bowl rings, you go to six. I mean, you're in a, you know, at every championship game, what, 11 out of 16 championship games in a conference. How do you do better than that? And he's 39, and he's still getting better. I mean, yeah. he doesn't throw interceptions. He doesn't make fumbles. Right. The guy right now is the greatest. And so as great as this dynasty is, and it is a great dynasty, it's going to be a three-point game. But I put my money really? on Brady. Oh, yeah. Ah, well, because what's been, what's been the margin in this previous six? Three points. Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're but right. who gets the edge in those three-point games? The more experienced quarterback, who might happen to be the greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> Uh, special teams, mm -hmm. how important? 
Oh, it's very important. Because you, know, you don't want to make the mistakes, and of course you know they've got a great kicker in New England. In both cases, I think that you know, the Falcons may have a better chance to make a few mistakes, because they've got so many young guys coming through. I mean, they're young on defense, so they're going to be young on special teams and breaking a lot of guys through. But I still look at the edge, I mean, a great kicker, Matt, uh, Bryant for Atlanta, Pro Bowl year, but I mean, you know, don't want to allow any big plays on defense, but I mean, you know how it is on special teams right now. It's minimized compared to when you play because, you know, now they're getting the touchbacks. I mean, you realize now in the past year in an NFL game, you only get four kickoff returns because everything else is touchbacks. I yeah. mean, that element's taken off. You don't get the Billy White Shoes Johnsons and things like that. <laughs> what you more get now is maybe one run by a Tyreek Hill on a kick. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're not letting that happen again. That game's going to the back, ball going to the back of the end zone. <laughs> Folks, you have heard it from the best. Now you know why we all call him the professor. Thank you Mike, so much. Thank you. <laughs> I think for me, uh, a lot has been, you know, with our, our chaplain, Jack Easterby and uh, Matt Slater. Um, they've been great leaders. So for me, um, our weekly Bible studies, you know, Monday and then Saturday before the games, and just trying to take that message into in my life each week. You know, it's always a new lesson, you know, trying to stay in the Word. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, we talk about, you know, individually and, you know, the group of guys is just staying in the Word and, and trying to, live our life by that, you know, not just coming in Bible study two times a week and, you know, kind of leaving it there, but taking it outside and, you know, putting it to work. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, I don't look at it as like leadership, but just holding each other accountable. You know, I think that's been the biggest thing in our team, a group of guys just trying to be good men, be good fathers, good sons, good husbands. And, you know, we're always talking about that and trying to encourage each other. Our next testimony, a linebacker, and he will hit you and then he'll pray for you. Paul Warlow, a good man, a tough man, a man he knows how to play the game of life too. You'll enjoy his testimony. There's a lot more to me than ball, you know, and I mean, that starts, it always starts with Christ, you know, the values and, and, and that just goes back to how I was raised with my parents, you know, two hardworking, God-fearing people. And uh, as a family man as, and as a dad now, you know, uh, I mean, Christ was a daily thing for us. You know, it's a daily, who we look to every day, how we raise, you know, our children, uh, the kind of husband I am. So it's m much deeper than, than football. At University of Delaware, I played, we did a, uh, a drive for Be The Match, where you can match um, anybody who needs, you know, anybody with cancer that you, you can help through stem cells or, or bone marrow. And uh, I matched uh, a like I think 21 year old lady with with leukemia so I donated uh, PBSC peripheral blood stem cells and uh, you know it was just it was just no, no brainer and I've had friends who, who have done it as well and you know the coolest part has been able to talk about it afterwards and, and try to get more people to join because you know not everybody that that needs a match has one in their family so they have to look outward so you know the more people that, that they can get to join you know the better for everybody you remember that moment where Christ really became the Lord of your life uh, you know I've always I've always looked to the Lord growing up you know my whole family I think as I've gotten older you know having a daughter has kind of been that that's a big change in big it changes you a lot and you know you you start to, to call on God a lot more and, and for guidance just you know, giving me the wisdom and, and looking to him for everything because that, that was a big moment for us. So you, I could kind of feel a shift between my wife and I because she, you know, we're the same. We both believe and, and um, but, you know, a lot of new talks between us about, you know, regarding God and Jesus and, and our daughter. So that, that, was a, that was the most recent shift for, for us. The Super Bowl is awesome, but I mean, just everything outside of it, the kind of person you are, the, the values and, just the, the daily life, you know, how can you affect those around you? What, what am I here for? I think it's a lot bigger than, than ball. You know, my uh, growing up in Carrollton, Georgia, it was a uh, small town where uh, two things were certain. You were at the football game on Friday night, and then you were in church on Sunday morning. And so growing up in the church was, uh, a, a, was a blessing for me, and having parents that, uh, that were right there along my side to kind of show me the way. Uh, you know, so I, my walk started early. Uh, I gave my, my life to Christ in middle school, 
but then you know I kind of started to think that you know maybe maybe my, my heart and mind wasn't in the right spot to make that decision at that that age and as I got from high school to college I got involved with the FCA program and uh, program. the FCA program at Auburn under Chet Williams is, he does an amazing job and that's where I really kind of started to, to turn a corner in my faith and when I got to Atlanta uh, Jason Webster our team chaplain here really did a great job of taking me under his wing and really showing me you know and teaching me how to apply your you know your relationship with God to this career and job in football now and I got a chance to go to the uh, PAO conference down in Orlando after my rookie year and my wife and I were uh, were baptized together after that that conference and ever since then you know we have both been on fire Without him, we would not have these opportunities that we have today. And uh, every day I wake up and I pray, you know, just a, a prayer of thanks, you know, a thankful prayer, you know, for putting us in these situations and giving us a platform like this to, uh, to glorify him and to, you know, procla proclaim his love for us. So I grew up uh, in a Lutheran church back in Altamont Springs, Florida. Um, as a young kid, didn't have much interest. I was wanting to play basketball, baseball, football, be outside was kind of one of those. And then when I went off to college, I kind of went on my own and explored. And uh, that's when I truly realized and learned that like I, need, I needed Jesus in my life. And uh, we had some great FCA directors and team chaplains. Um, Jack Easterby, who's actually the FCA or the team chaplain for the Patriots, was my FCA director at South Carolina. And, uh, you know, he was monumental in my, in my walk with Christ. And, um, you know, it's just... Uh, kind of been growing and growing ever since. I'm super blessed to be in the situation I am and I'm um, very grateful for it. So I just feel like every life I can touch and um, just person I can move by actions, by kindness, just by, you know, an hour here or there or some money here or there. I mean, it could, this this stage that I'm on, this this pedestal that I'm given because of Jesus is, is so much bigger. And, um, you know, you can reach out to so many people and that's it's kind of one of my motivations and behind everything I do. Because there's nothing you can do, good or bad, that's ever going to change his love for you. He's going to love you the same today, yesterday, tomorrow. There's, there's no impact. It's, it's, it's all, it's all there. He, he, he gave it all on the cross. You know, even when you get to such a big stage like this, um, you kind of have that peace that you know, regardless of the outcome, you know, you know, God's already worked it out. And uh, like you said, God doesn't love you any more or less based on whether you win or lose. Um, and at the end of the day, this is, this is, for me, I look at it as a platform to, to glorify him with, you know, the blessings and the talents that, that he's given me. You know, I realized in the game that when I hooked up over the middle, playing the same <laughs> position, that when that ball came to me in the air, how much it lined up with the word of God, it says it'll draw all men to you. <laughs> yeah, hey, there you go. That, yeah, that, that football definitely <laughs> it does relate. What was that moment that really God became real to you? And then how do you apply that to your life? Well, I'll say um, I grew up in the church, always grew up in the church. My mom, she's a reverend. Uh, she's a choir director. I play the organ for the church when I go home. And I say all the, a little bit, you know. But I say the moment where it really became real to me was my senior year in high school, I was taking my, my girlfriend at the time back to college and uh, I got in a car accident, like literally lost control of my dad's truck, got hit by 18 wheeler, like cars totaled. I'm literally sitting there, my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife now, she um, literally like 30 seconds before she um, had her seatbelt off, looking in the back seat, like she literally just put her seatbelt on. So literally that moment, just being able to walk out of that with no scratches, wow. being able to play a football game the next week, my, my girlfriend at the time being safe, it just let me know that God got me, no matter the situation. Like, it's just the car is total, hit by 18-wheeler. I walk out, with just no scratches. No, 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 no breaks, no, nothing. Like wow. just walked out, just free, and I just knew at that moment, like this, he's real. He's real. He he got me no matter what. Everything. He is. He's the first. Like before anything else, I gotta always put him first. He he has to be the main source. He has to be my everything before anything else. I can't put football before him. I can't put my family before him. I can't put anything before him. He has to be the main thing. And then after that, it's just all about treating, in my eyes, 
all about treating people how you wanted to be treated. I feel like if you love God and then you treat people how you wanted to be treated, everything will usually take care of itself. Everything I do, I'm doing it for an audience of one. And um, I know that I'm blessed to have the opportunity that I have and I feel like I'm in debt and I have to maximize that opportunity. And obviously as I work and prepare and play football, you know, I'm always going to go out there and give it everything I have. But I think on the back end, uh, when you get off the football field, the relationships that you build with people, uh, especially in the locker room with the guys that you're with, in the community and in your home, that's very important. So uh, I try to carry that mindset with me, uh, whether I'm you know, working out on the field or working at home, you know, I'm doing everything for an audience of one. I don't put all my eggs into the football basket. I think it, football is a temporary game, and, and I hope that they see a guy who's got an eternal perspective beyond the game of football, a man who's approachable, a man who cares about them and their families just as much as he does about what they do on the football field. So that's the way I've tried to carry myself the whole time I've been here. Uh, I'm a man who's far from perfect, but you know I've had a lot of grace shown to me from the good Lord, and, and I try to show that to the, the men around me. Uh, it started at home for me with my parents, uh, my mother and father, Annie and Jackie. Um, I feel like I had the, the greatest examples that a kid could have. They just celebrated 40 years of marriage, so uh, it really started at home for me. And then I had several pastors along the way that really poured into my life and um, you know helped develop me as a young man. I had several mentors and coaches starting at Servite High School uh, where I went to school in, in Southern California all the way through UCLA and even here. Um, you know I truly don't believe in self-made men. Um, I really believe that uh, number one the good Lord has to bless you but secondly you have people and places and opportunity placed in your life along the way they really make you and mold you into who you are. And uh, I know that I'm not standing here on my own two feet. There's a lot of people that have lifted me up in prayer, provided support, been there for me when I needed them over the years. Uh, and I'm so thankful for that. And, and obviously now being married, my wife is my biggest support system and my son. Uh, but again, uh, there are in my mind, there are no self-made men. There are a lot of people that that allow a man to stand where he does and accomplish what he does. Well, the initial moment uh, that you're referring to happened when I was seven years old. Uh, my dad and I sitting in my bedroom and him, as he did many nights, uh, reading the Word of God to me. And I remember him asking me, you know, what I thought about Jesus. And, you know, at seven years old, it's kind of hard for you to fully grasp uh, salvation and, and who the person of Christ is. but I think I had, at that time, a, a limited understanding that was enough for me to say, you know, this is something that I want to build my life around. And then I say another turning point moment for me came during my college years. You know, growing up in Southern California, uh, I went to a Christian school, was, lived in a Christian home, went to a great church there, Calvary Church in Santa Ana. But when I got to college, I had to really personalize my faith. and. You know, there were some tough decisions that needed to be made. And I remember during my freshman year of college coming home, uh, you know, I had made all the right ones. And, and my dad really challenged me to say, hey, man, this is the time for you to become a man. And you say you want to be this kind of man and you've professed that. Uh, it was time to start acting upon it. So I think there was that time my freshman year in college where I really had to trigger my faith. And, uh, you know, it's been... You know, it's something that has continued to develop and will continue to develop all the way until I, you know, go to go to meet my maker. Number one, you have to understand who God is and who his son is. And you have to understand what God says about your sin. And from there, you realize that, hey, you know, I am a sinful person and my sin has separated me from uh, an eternal, perfect God. And but there's a backup plan to that. He sent his son, Jesus. And I believe that. Uh, Jesus is is the Son of God, is God. He came here. He died on the cross for my sins, your sins, everybody's sins, everybody who's willing to accept that truth. And uh, if you're able to put your trust in him and, and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is who he says he is, then from there you can initiate a relationship with him. But I also believe that repentance is a big part of that as well. Um, you have to turn from your old life of sin and try to, 
you know, model uh, a Christ-like life. And I think that that's something that we'll never fully figure out on this side of glory, but uh, it's certainly a one day at a time process that I've been so blessed to be on uh, for the last 25 or so years. Congratulations on a great season. Can you explain the madness? Oh, it's been a blast. Glad to be out here. What a blessing and an opportunity to be here. What is maybe the thing here that you've enjoyed the most? I enjoyed the most just hanging out with my friends and family and like just seeing everybody out here and be out here with this brotherhood. Houston's a big place. Let's talk about something else big in your life, and that is your faith in God and your walk with God. And uh, tell me about how that happened, what, how that means to you. Absolutely. I mean, I was uh, born in a Christian family. My dad was a pastor, so I was blessed and lucky enough to come up with that upbringing and knowing Jesus from a very early age. When in your life did that moment, like everybody else, that you need, you need to make that decision for yourself? to follow Christ and how did that happen? Absolutely, I mean, my, my entire life I, I knew him, but there's a certain moments where you just feel his presence and you really lean on him even more. I mean, I had certain things happen to me, like I remember in one preseason game I got injured and it was like a pretty intense injury in my very first or second play and I had to really lean on God that entire game and it was preseason game four, so I was, that was the game, it was like make it or break it for me. So. It was one of those moments where, you know, in my weakness, God was able to show his strength, and it was awesome. To sit here, because a lot of people play in this game. I played for 10 years in the league myself, but they play in this game. It doesn't work out for them. And, man, all the energy is gone, and what am I going to do now? But uh, you don't have that thought simply because you understand there's a bigger game, and that, of course, is the game of life. Absolutely. I mean, God has a plan for me, a plan to prosper me. I mean, I've been cut from teams before, and you think, like, oh, my world's been crushed. Like, that was my opportunity, and it's not all about that. I mean, no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to work as hard as I can, and, and then, then that diligence, I'm going to worship God in that manner. Now, tell me, your, uh, tell me your determination, what it took for you to get here. Air Force, uh, uh, played for Air Force, and that determination, no matter what anybody says, I'm going to make it to the NFL. Absolutely. I mean, it was a tough route for me. I went to the Air Force Academy, so I had a commitment to the Air Force. So my first two years, I had to serve simultaneously as training to try out for a team. So I took my leave in order to attend training camp, and like I was working my tail off in order to make it. And even then, I had to decide whether I wanted to give up a career to be a pilot, which is an incredible career that I worked my tail off to get to. or give that up and actually pursue an NFL career, which my chances were very small, especially not being able to play as much as everyone else and like being in that that serving asset. How do you keep your faith going in the midst of this very tough season where it's very demanding? You, I think when it is a tough season, that's whenever you gotta rely on your faith the most. And that's when God's there for you the most. And that's that's been the biggest thing for me is like in my toughest moments, that's when I've really leaned on him and felt his presence and gotten me through those moments. You're a big believer in tithing. Tell me your testimony there. Well, for, for me, I always struggle with tithing. It was one of those things where it was like, I always forgot my wallet or just made him an excuse or just somehow and like a week after week it kind of build up and I hadn't tithed in a long time. so. Uh, last year, I just, you know you know what, I'm going to tie my entire year salary in one thing and just give it all. And it was it was terrifying handing over that check. I was like, oh my God, this is a big check. And then a, w a couple days after I did, they called me into the office of the GM and they said, uh, gave me a brand new contract, quadrupled my salary for no reason. I mean, I was blown away. I mean, talk about when God just... Uh, you didn't know it was coming? No, no clue. There's no reason to. I mean, nobody got hurt, nobody thing changed. Like... It just quadrupled my salary and it's like, you just talk about God like opening the floodgates of heaven and on me. Like he says, test him in that. And <laughs> so your gift had no strings attached to it. Right. And because of that, God honors. Absolutely. And it was, it was unbelievable to see that. I mean, for, uh, for a lot of guys, you kind of see like when you're coming to get a new contract, but mine was middle of the season, no reason. It was just, it was, it was God. Okay, last question. You're standing in front of hundreds of youth, you know, and 
they're cheering and yelling, seeing this big man walk in, and you have the right to tell them about Christ, making the right decision. So in your words, what would you tell them? Because you will have, this is worldwide, you'll have a huge audience. And so a closing word, what would you say? I'd say God loves you. It doesn't matter where you are at in your life, what you've done in your past. He forgives you, welcomes you, and he loves to have you. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, I've made a ton of mistakes in my life, and I continue to make mistakes. But no matter what I do, he's there for me, and it's rare to have that. And everyone wants that. And he'll fill that hole that you're missing. There's that deep down, there's a hole that you're wanting to fill, and the only thing that can fill it is God. Came from an incredible family, incredible mom and dad, and that's everything, of course. But yet there comes that point in time when you have to make that decision to follow the Lord yourself. Yeah, and I, um, you know, I actually have a really cool story about that. Uh, my dad and my family actually own a little bit of property out here in Houston. And um, in uh, the fourth grade, I was actually sitting with my dad in the living room and, uh, you know, just kind of talking about that stuff. And, that, and it was that night that I, I decided to, you know, put my faith in Jesus Christ and make him my Lord and Savior. And, um, you know, it, it, it's such an awesome and humbling feeling to be, you know, loved by the creator of this universe and know that he's on my side no matter if I'm a good football player or or if I have success or not as long as I do it you know with all my heart and um, do it for his honor and his glory I can't go wrong God could care less about who wins the game but he cares about the person in the game and so knowing that your foundation is not the sport it's your walk with God means what to you? Yeah, I, I, I remind myself of that all the time. Uh, you know, as great it, as it is to be a, you know, great football player and, and to get recognition, um, this stuff, that, that stuff's all fleeting. It's not going to last. Um, the only thing that is eternal is, you know, Christ Jesus. And um, reminding myself of that all the time is something I think that keeps me balanced and humble and hungry. And, um, you know, I think just accepting that, it, it's not something that shows how perfect I am or how I have it figured out. I, it, it's, it shows how imperfect I am and how, how badly I need a savior and how badly I need, um, you know, someone to save me, like I said. So uh, very, very honored and very humbled and proud to, you know, be a follower of Christ. Is there a few steps in your life that you, you do to remind you to stay focused, to stay on track? Yeah, you know, I, I try to stay in my Bible. I, I keep a pretty good game plan for that. Um, before every game, uh, I pray, you know, Lord, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I just pray that I can, you know, just do my best and honor and glorify your name. And, um, you know, all the good stuff or the bad stuff that comes my way, I, I just want to give it to you. I just want to give you all of me. And, and, and that's something I'm constantly reminding my, myself of. And, um, you know, it, it keeps me balanced. You're very humble about that. and. I know your dad pretty good. I had the privilege here, here a couple of years ago of sitting down with uh, some of your siblings. And I had a blast just sitting at the table. It was at a golf tournament and just watching your younger sibling. And, and uh, with mom and dad there, and we talk a lot about your dad, 19 years, as good as any offensive line, but several played in the game and even a better man off the field. But your mom, special lady. No question. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm one of seven kids. So, and like you said, my dad played 19 years. So she, she was in charge of us for the most part. And uh, I couldn't ask for a more loving and, and nurturing and caring uh, mother. I, I love her to death. And uh, she's also one of the big reasons behind our faith as a family and uh, the trust we have in the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't say enough how proud and humbled and blessed I feel to to have parents like that and and who led me the right way and uh, instilled you know great values in me and um, I love them to death for it a lot of young people today are hurting watching this this will be worldwide uh, if you had that opportunity if, if you could in the spirit see thousands of young people that need direction in life in closing what would a man in your position say to them? You know, I think, I think we all are searching for something. There, there's an, you know, if you try to go through this life on your own, on your own, uh, there's a feeling of lost and 
Um, we, we all just, we want to be loved and we're, we're looking for something. And, um, you know, the only thing in this life that's ever brought me true peace and joy is uh, the love of Jesus Christ. And, um, you, know, I, I, I try, you know, I've tried I've, multiple times, you know, you think you got it figured out and I, I always fall back on it. I, you know, I think, oh, I, I can do it on my own. And, you know, that's my pride trying to tell me that, you know, I got it figured out. But it, it's, it's, it's just so obvious to me that what the answer is. And, um, you know, the more I study it and the more I look into it, the, the clearer it becomes. So I, I just feel very, very, very humbled and blessed to be in this opportunity and, and to be able to speak about, speak out about stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching this Super Bowl special. Son, would you please give us an invitation because this program wouldn't be complete without it. Absolutely, it has been my honor. Here we are, we've been talking about football, but also talking about the game of life. You've heard people share their story, many players, and I don't know where you find yourself. Maybe your marriage is broken, maybe your life feels messed up, maybe you're the worst spot you've ever been. Here's what I want you to know, that if God didn't need you, he wouldn't have created you. But it did create you, so he must need you. And let me tell you right now, these guys are here at the Super Bowl to be the number one. That's They're right. both playing to be the top. That's but right. here's the deal. They all want to be the top. And many of us, you got to ask, is Jesus part of your top three? Or is he the number one in your life? He didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three, but to be the number one. So let's make him number one in your life today. If you don't know where you are, if you can't answer the question, if you were to die right now, would you split heaven wide open? And let's change that right now. And God can reach right through this lens right now and touch you wherever you are. It's real simple. Say this prayer after me. My dad's gonna help me out. Let's say it all together. Let's say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. For sending your son. For sending your son. Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. For dying on the cross for me. For dying on the cross for Wash me. my sins clean. Wash my sins clean. Make me new. Make me new. Make me whole. Make me whole. From this day forward. This day, I will serve you. I will serve you every day of my life. Every day of my in life. Jesus in Jesus' name, it is that name. simple. And the Bible says, when one comes to heaven, all, all of heaven. heaven throws a party. Give me we a throw a party today, amen. man. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us here at the NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. Our home is very special, but what made this program special was you. These players are going to party at the football, but we in Christ, we party with God's word. Welcome those of you that prayed that prayer to the greatest family of all, the family of God. Mm -hmm. We love Amen. you, but more than that, God loves you. We just scored us a great touchdown. Be blessed.